of healthcare leaders, Departments of Public Health, EMA, the Georgia Municipal Association, ACCG, and state leaders, further measures need to be taken to prevent or minimize illness or injury to people and damage to property resulting from the emergency event that we have referred to as COVID-19. Today, another executive order is being issued. I want to acknowledge those who are in attendance on this afternoon, beginning with Commissioner Barry Davis, Commissioner Dennis Williams, Commissioner Sammy Sias, Commissioner John Clark, our EMA Director Chris James, Department of Public Health Director Dr. Stephen Goggins. As we have approached this situation over the last several weeks with both federal and state guidance, the safety and well-being of our citizens is our number one concern and our number one priority. With this in mind, I want to assure our citizens that the city has taken proactive steps to ensure the health and welfare of our community. Today, we issue Executive Order 2020-005. This order follows the Centers for Disease Control's latest guidance that people should not gather in groups of 10 or more, with certain exceptions such as grocery stores, pharmacies, medical facilities, hospitals. It provides for the closing of public restaurants, except for takeout service, the closing of bars, gymnasiums, and other indoor recreational facilities and body care salons of all types that allow groups of 10 or more people to typically congregate. Additional restrictions are imposed on other retail establishments dependent on their ability to provide safe social distancing. These restrictions shall take effect at midnight tonight and shall extend through April 4th, 2020, unless further amended by the mayor or the Augusta Commission. This is the next step in an ongoing effort by city leadership to flatten the curve of the virus. As more testing is being conducted than in previous weeks, the number of confirmed cases will rise potentially and lead to more fear, anxiety, and possibly panic by our citizens, and we do not want that. It is imperative that we do all that we can collectively to mitigate this significant threat to life, health, and safety of all of our citizens in Augusta. This newest order is an attempt to limit, limit the rapid spread of this disease so that our local hospitals can manage potential cases without being overwhelmed all at one time. To accomplish this, Augustans will have to work together. The citizens of our community will ultimately determine the success or failure of these actions. Please know that core services such as trash pickup, water, police, and fire services will not be reduced. The Georgia Department of Public Health, District 6, Augusta, East Central Health District, has been and will continue to provide guidance and recommendations to our community partners as this situation evolves. The East Central Health District Department of Public Health and Augusta's 311 Department have set up a hotline for members of the public and the business community seeking guidance on how they can help in limiting the spread of this pandemic. For those with symptoms or general questions about the disease, how to self-quarantine, or questions about symptoms, dial 311. Nothing slows the spread of COVID-19 effectively as social isolation. As frustrating as it may be, while these decisions are not made easily, and we know how frustrating they will be for many citizens, we have a responsibility to act in the best interest of everyone's health and safety. For now, the best way to reduce the spread of COVID-19 is to wash your hands for 20 seconds or more, cover your mouth and nose when you sneeze, stay home if you're sick, and call your primary care physician, and regularly disinfect commonly used hard surfaces at your home in concert with the guidelines that have been sent to local and state governments and communities by the CDC. And finally, to practice safe social distancing. If you have concerns about your health, contact your health care provider immediately. At this time, I'm going to ask Dr. Stephen Goggins to come and talk about testing and what citizens in our community can do, followed by a short Q&A session.
So as the mayor stated, testing has increased significantly in our area. Um, nonetheless, there are still people who may not know how to access testing. And so I wanted to share some information on that. If someone feels like testing may be appropriate for them, they can contact their primary care doctor. Should do so by phone to let them know what they're interested in and they can help arrange testing in many cases. Also, there's a, another avenue, a website, AugustaExpressCare.org, that is an entry to free online telemedicine-based screening for folks who are interested in testing. They will connect the callers with testing if it's appropriate. And that is an important point. Not everyone needs testing. For folks who have mild illnesses and who do not have high risk contacts or occupations, it may be most appropriate for them to simply self-isolate and stay at home for a period of time. But for those who screen uh, as needing testing, they can be linked with testing through either of those paths. Very briefly, we'll just give a brief update as to what we know right now through our EMA office. At the present time, the latest update that we have by the CDC is the state of Georgia has a total of 507 cases. They have 14 deaths at this point. And Richmond County has a total, based on the information from the CDC, nine cases. Now, we do know that number um, is increasing as more private labs are doing testing. And so those numbers are increasing. And as we've watched this over the few, uh, past few days, this number increases every day. So from the EMA office, what we're going to start to do, as we've done before and continue to do, is start more education of the public, letting the public know what's going on, what to do, how to stay safe. Um, in addition to that, uh, we're working with GEMA and the Department of Pub Public Health on a supply chain on how we can get resources in definitely for the first responders and the hospitals so that we will still be able to provide uh, medical assistance to those citizens that need that, that assistance. So that's how we're moving forward um, and uh, if you have any questions as well from the EMA office um, you can call us at 821-1155 um, so that we can either answer your question and get you guided in the proper area uh, so you can get assistance that you may need. Thank you. I want to share a few things with the media uh, because I know that these questions will resonate in our public. Uh, this order uh, establishes the following, that all public or private community gatherings of more than 10 people anywhere within Augusta are prohibited during the duration of this order. Uh, a community gathering, uh, as we know, is where you have 10 or more people. Uh, the order or the guidelines from the CDC have recommended that safe social distancing practices to include in our houses of worship should be 10 or less people. We want to make certain that the members of our community are adhering to this and in those community gatherings that you are remaining generally within six feet extended of each other in those spaces. Secondly, this order provides that restaurants open to the public shall close except to provide takeout, drive through or curbside service to include alcoholic beverages in sealed containers which they are otherwise licensed to dispense. All business locations with on-premise consumption of alcohol beverage licenses, which are not also restaurants, shall be closed for business. Establishments for body care services, which require close physical contact between the provider and clients, such as barbering, hair design, aesthetics, massage therapy, tattooing, or nail care, should be closed for business. And all indoor recreation facilities to include gyms, health studios, indoor amusements, bowling alleys, pool halls, and theaters shall be closed for business. It's extremely important that we have a number of our business establishments that have already moved into compliance with the CDC guidelines. I've heard from a number of our businesses downtown 
that have already moved in concert with this. Uh, they were anticipating uh, directives from the city of Augusta, and they will work in concert as we move to not only stem the tide of this virus, uh, but look forward to being in this mode of recovery on the other side of this. There have been a number of businesses here in Augusta that continue to have uh, businesses where individuals in excess of two to 300 people are showing up. That should stop today. It is extremely important for us as a community collectively to work together to flatten the curve and to stop the spread of the virus. At this point, we'll take questions. Um, so a lot of people are wondering about curfews. Is that something that you see putting in place? Uh, it is certainly well within the rights of the commission to uh, enact a curfew. Uh, there has been some conversation as late as this past Thursday about that. Uh, I believe that this is the first step. Working in collaboration with our sheriff's agency, uh, the sheriff weighed in on this executive order and indicated that he believed this was the most prudent first step uh, towards helping to stop the virus's spread. Uh, we share that sentiment and I think that we're going to see immediate progress with regards to that. Um, and also like malls, I know you mentioned a lot of recreational places, but malls have a lot of stores within it, employees within it, people that frequent it. Is that something that you're going to shut down? Well, again, as we take these proactive steps, uh, we know that malls provide you with an opportunity to practice safe social distancing. Uh, and to the degree that that can happen, uh, we will then review that and if necessary, take additional steps. But we, again, provided measures in here in terms of the square footage of a facility and to the degree that safe social distancing can be employed there, uh, then they should be fine. What about daycares? How will they be affected by this? Uh, this is a concern of ours. Uh, again, uh, daycares uh, also have children. Uh, children's bodies tend to be very resilient. Uh, one of the things as it relates to the CDC guidelines is that uh, we know that those 60 and older are more susceptible uh, to uh, being affected. Uh, I would yield to the science and to our doctors with regards to how we should handle that, but I believe that the CDC has certainly given us guidelines in terms of how daycare should be handled. Dr. Guyton, would you like to weigh in on that, or is that appropriate? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, one thing, too, a lot of people had questions about, which might be an answer from the doctor, mm -hmm. Does this carry into mosquitoes, pets? Could you share it with anything? I know, you know, a lot of people were questioning that on our comments on Facebook. So as far as we know, it does not transfer into pets or is not transmissible by pets. And uh, there's a lot that we don't know about this illness because it is new, but uh, that has been looked at. Certainly some of the people ask a lot. And that's what we understand about it right now. I also want to address uh, Commissioner Science reminded us that our community parks are open. Uh, the city parks are open for individuals to go outside. Uh, again, we have to practice safe social distancing uh, there as well. But we know that our children are out of school. Uh, government institutions, uh, facilities, uh, libraries, etc., are closed. Uh, but we also have our children. They're out of school. Uh, they're conducting school online at this point. Uh, and one of the ways that parents can continue to spend time with their children is at our city parks. And so they are open and available. Uh, we have to, even in those settings, uh, outside, make sure that we're continuing to practice safe social distancing. Um, do you have any financial recovery plans after this big shutdown? Well, one of the things that I'm excited about is that I've got a group of leaders behind me, uh, and these commissioners are prepared for us to uh, convene over the next several weeks and look at what we can do locally in terms of addressing uh, any local efforts around economic recovery. What we do know is that the federal government, Congress has passed the first package, $8.3 billion, uh, that will be coming into communities that will allow us to do things, particularly as the EMA director indicated, around medical supplies, our first response in terms of addressing this issue. There currently is a measure in Congress that's being debated now in the Senate in terms of parental leave, paid parental leave, how we can address small businesses. Most recently, SBA, and we did this in Executive Order 2020-003, we included uh, language in there that would allow our local community to be included 
and having businesses apply for SBA lending. Uh, that is already in place right now. So there are measures and steps that we are already taking uh, collectively as the Augusta Commission. Uh, but I do know that as we move forward, we're going to do more to make sure that Augusta rebounds and our businesses do as well. Um, and if you could just clarify the 10 people or less, mm -hmm. uh, because I know a lot of people are saying churches are live streaming with a small group of people, mm -hmm. but things are shutting down. So just mm -hmm. clarify what you mean by that. Well, again, uh, churches are convening with uh, 10 or less. Uh, those are the CDC guidelines. And across the board, we should be employing those practices. We're doing it for the city of, a government, uh, city of Augusta government operations. We've got private sector businesses that are doing the same thing. And out of an abundance of caution and concern uh, and a step to minimize and or mitigate the spread of this uh, virus in our community, uh, if you are assembled, uh, that assemblage should not be more than 10 people. Clearly, should not be more than 10 people across the board. And so these are shutting down just because you can't control that it's going to be over 10 or under 10. That's, that's absolutely correct. Okay. So we'll go, you can go ahead. What, what would the penalty be for businesses who don't uh, adhere to the order? So one of the things that we have not done, again, which is why working in concert with our sheriff, uh, where we have not taken the full steps towards curfew, is that we don't want this to necessarily be punitive in nature. Uh, the enforcement mechanisms uh, have to be considered uh, as it relates to that. And so this first step uh, allows us to willingly get uh, compliance. And as we see effort around that, uh, then we'll reconvene and we'll talk about what additional measures need to be taken. But we believe fundamentally that this is, in fact, the first step. Communities across the great state of Georgia are taking the same step. Uh, Atlanta, uh, Columbus, Muskogee, uh, they did it on yesterday. Uh, Athens, Clark County has employed similar measures. And we believe that this is a way that in local communities we can get our arms around and do as much as we can in the absence of additional directives from the state or federal government. Thank you.